Hello again everyone, this is Zombie Kids Rule and I'm back with another um, RPG Maker MZ uh, tutorial. And, um, you know, uh, again, I, you know, for anyone who, who uh, has seen my previous videos, you, you know that um, I did take a little bit of a hiatus uh, while I was play playing with my uh, uh, 1X player and my Steam Deck. And uh, again, I'm going to try to go that back to balancing, um, spending time learning RPG Maker, uh, things that I can do in it posting tutorials, um, continuing working on a, on a game type of concept while I'm still doing, you know, Steam Deck stuff, you know, trying to figure out uh, what plays and things. So uh, this next video, I, I want to um, do another uh, one in the series of uh, the player-driven portal, portal system. And this one isn't terribly different from the use of the scrolls that I did last time. Uh, it just adds a different concept of like um, a, a chargeable item. And then uh, there's going to be some other ones um, coming up uh, shortly that have other options for player-driven portals. And, and they get progressively more complex in, in how you do things. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on one right now that is kind of a consolidation of all the concepts together so that regardless of what you choose, whether you say have somebody use scrolls or an item or a skill, and whether you call that skill a spell or whatever, it all comes together into the same type of, um, you know, using multiple common events uh, to link all those things together uh, for however many party members you have. So um, let me show you this next one. This is going to be for an item uh, like a, a, a chargeable amulet. So I'm going to go ahead and um, show you what this does first. Uh, and again, I'll just say, you know, ignore the other things that are going on. Um, I just use the same maps as I try to uh, uh, test things. So, okay, so here we go, and, and my, my sound is off on my computer, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but so first, I have to go over here. Actually, let me turn this sound on. Um, there we go. Give it a little bit of sound. All right. Yeah, I'm one of those people who has, it has to be perfect. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, whoops. What happened? Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Um, I clicked away from it. Sorry. All right, so I got my... my uh, my items that I need for this. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to go down here, this next one, and again, just disregard all these people. Uh, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to use uh, an item. I'm going to use the uh, the teleport amulet, okay, because I'm pretty sure I did scroll. Around. So, okay, so now um, I program this to be like an amulet that has a, a, a dimension demon in it. So, greetings, master, I'm a dimension demon. I can set and return uh, you to portals. Uh, would you like me to set a portal for you or return you to, it should be a portal, uh, charges remaining is seven. So, when you get this amulet, it has a random number of charges initially. So, we're going to progress the text, set portal, return to portal, never mind. If I click never mind, it just exits, okay, and then I go back in again, same thing, should still have seven charges, perfect. Um, all right, so now I'm going to return to portal, and it says, hey, you have not set a portal yet, and then it loops back, what do you want to do? So now I'm going to set a portal, okay, as you wish, the portal has been set. Okay, so now I'm going to go out of here, I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to return to portal using that same amulet, right? Uh, amulet used to set and return to a port. So there's the person again, right? Um, I, I could try to do something differently with this where maybe they uh, they recognize you, right, after you talk to them the first time, but um, that can get more challenging using common events. So uh, let's see. So now uh, I can I have six charges remaining. So you saw that uh, I, I used it once to do something, so now it, it reduced the charge. And um, I could set it again. Right, so actually, I'm going to uh, click this. Uh, you already have a portal set. Do you wish to set a new portal? No, I don't. So, however, I would like to do return to portal. So it's going to take me back to that portal there. All right. Now, if I go in again and go to that same amulet, uh, introduction is the same, and now I only have five charges remaining. Right. And so, as you can see, this this continues in this vein. All right. Um, and that's pretty much it. So. Uh, let's see, never mind, and okay, 
And so that's that's going to be it for that. All right, that's 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 what's happening with this uh, teleportation amulet. And like I said, what I did was I started with the idea of how do I let the player set portals and return to portals. And then as I did something and I thought I was done, I said, you know, but wait a second. What if I what if I want them to do this? And what if I want multiple portals? And what if I want to change the um, you know the uh, the the order of the party and all this other stuff? And that led to to more development of different things. Uh, so this piece is just that one item. So first thing, again, go into the database and going into items, right? Um, we were looking at the teleport amulet. So it has a name, has an icon, has a description. It's a regular item, no price so that you can't sell it. It's not consumable, so you don't use it up, right? Uh, we're, the, the charges that it has are tracked separately. Uh, no scope. I, again, I set this for always, uh, but again, if you don't want them to be able to use this in battle, right, then you would probably want to select something different there or at least see what happens if you try to use it in battle. Um, test. I have not tested that out yet. Uh, I didn't do any of these things down here, didn't do anything up here, and then I just did uh, the common event, right? So it's triggering a common event when I use this item uh, of Portal Amulet. And again, if you don't know, when you're in an item, you just double click, and you have these different things that you can you can set as part of say your item right um you know recover state parameters and then these other things which down here is common event and you can pick from your common events that you have okay so that's all the item is doing you you create the common event separately um and then over here um we're going to uh open up this chest and uh, this is where I'm just giving them the um, teleport amulet, right? So it's regular chest. But here is where I'm setting the control variable, right? So I'm setting the control variable for portal amulet charges. And it's equal to a random number between 6 and 10. Okay, so that's that's where the, the initial charges are being set. Okay, um, and I'm just going to edit that. All right, and we'll... Sorry, just uh, got disrupted there for a second. So all I did was create a variable, right, portal amulet, and uh, set it to a random number between 6 and 10. You could do whatever you wanted there. It's, it's entirely up to you. Again, sorry, my, my cat keeps uh, interrupting me <laughs> wanting to do something. Um, so that's how you, you – we're going to track the uh, number of charges – uh, through this variable. Okay, so when I gave it to them, however I gave it to them, in this one I just made it in a chest, right? So I made a control variable for how many charges it has initially. Then um, we change items, teleport amulet. So again, you just select um, change items, right? And then you get to pick from your list of items, right? So, yeah, and then of course here you have to click down through until you find it. There's my teleport amulet, right? Uh, and then you increase your how many, however many, right, or decrease. You can take it away. You can do a variable. Um, and then that's pretty much – and then, of course, I just do the text, right? Um, teleport amulet was found, and then that's it. The rest of it is other things, okay? So, so, I, so in the chest, I give them the teleport amulet. I made the teleport amulet in the database. Now uh, – oh, and so, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't show you something. Hmm. Let me do that really quick. Uh, I'll show you something really quick. I forgot to show you this. So we'll go over here. Okay. There we got rid of this. Okay. Go over here. Do a teleport amulet. And how many port? We got seven charges remaining. So we're going to set portal. Okay. Portal's been set. Now. Um, okay. Now I have uh, six charges remaining. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. First thing this does, your item does not need recharging at this moment. Okay, so this is this is saying, oh, I can recharge my item, right? You can obviously set this up however you want, but uh, I just set this up to test. Can I recharge the item? So what I'd have to do here is I would have to just go in and do this a bunch of times, right? So set the portal. Yep, set the portal. It's already set. Uh, yes, I want to reset it. Okay, then I'm going to go up here. We're going to go here, get 
get through here a bunch of times. Return to portal. Okay. Get this through. Whoops. I already have the portal set. Yes. Okay. Whoops. Want to get this down to zero. Return to portal. Okay. And again, I only have two things remaining. There we go. And then should be one remaining. Yep, one remaining. Okay, now I'm going to go to use it again, and it shouldn't let me, right? Okay, all of the ambulance charges have been expended. The crystal is dark, and the demon is asleep. You will need to recharge the demon's power before you can use it again. So now the amulet is fully discharged. Go over here. Your item has been recharged. Charges remaining is 10. Okay, so now I have 10 more charges, and if I go in and check... It should say, yep, 10 charges remain. Okay. All right. So that's the part I forgot to show you. So I showed you the database item. I showed you how you get the item. And then over here, this recharging crystal, it's, it's a very simple, very, very simple um, uh, little event, right? So you name it whatever you want, give it whatever image you want. And, and to make it so that it... Um, it, uh, it is animated, I guess, if you, want, if you want to call it that in the game, you can make it uh, stepping, right? And, um, and it will cycle through its, um, its images. Uh, it's fixed, right? So it's same as character, so you can interact with it, action button. Now, first thing it's going to do is, uh, like you saw, where it said your, your item doesn't need charging. It's going to check the conditional branch of that variable. So if portal amulet charges is greater than zero, because remember, we did a random number of charges when we first gave it to them in the chest, then it's going to say, your item does not need charging in this moment. So it's not going to let you recharge the item if it has charges available, right? Now, you don't have to set it up that way. You could obviously let them charge whatever you want, um, but this is just the way I did it um, for, for purposes of testing it and showing the functionality. Then we have an else branch in this conditional statement, right? This, this uh, condition. So if it's greater than zero, then you have charges and it doesn't need charging. Else, it's going to use that same control variable, portal amulet charges, uh, variable 20, and it's going to do another random determination of 6 to 10. Again, you could set that for anything you wanted. However many charges you wanted to, it doesn't have to be random. You could do it a set number each time. Um, or in theory, you could make it where once you used up the charges, it's the, the item can no longer be used anymore, right? It's, 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 um, it's, it's uh, no longer uh, useful, right? It can't be recharged. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, then it shows the text, your item has been recharged, and then it shows the amount of charges using slash V and then the, the, um, uh, the variable number 20, right? And that will show you the value uh, of the number that it generated. So again, uh, when you do these, I'm, I'm trying to do better about showing you how to do these. Um, you select on page one of event commands, you select conditional branch, you select the variable that you want, right? And then, uh, you know, if it's greater than zero, um, then, you know, you click the else branch for creating that. Um, and, and then that's that portion that creates the else branch for you. And of course, the text is very simple, right? Um, and, you know, to do a text, you double click, page one, show text, right? And then, um, and then this other one here is, again, any, you, can you, you can call the value of, of a variable using slash v and then in brackets the number of the variable, 20, right? So that's how you do that. So very, very simple event. Um, it, it doesn't let you charge it unless it's at zero, and then it'll charge a random uh, amount, right? Uh, so we, we have the event, we have the uh, chest that we give it to them, and it gives them initial charges. We have the recharging event. Then the um, common event is portal amulet. That's what I called it. And this is not terribly complicated. So very similar to the scroll thing, right? Only this time, it has to deal with the charges. So the first thing it checks is, if the portal amulet charges is zero, then it triggers that text, hey, it's expended. You have to recharge this item. And then it's going to exit the event processing. So it's going to basically just kick you out of this common event. It's going to, it's going to end. Um, that's the first thing it's going to check. 
right? So if it's zero, then because um, we, we set it when we gave it to them, right, with a random number of charges. And then if it's not zero, right, so if it's, if it's essentially um, it has charges, it'll drop down and start here. So random, you know, just the text thing at first, I'm a dimension demon, I can set and return you to portals, and then another text, uh, would you like uh, me to set a portal for you or return you to, um, and I'm going to fix that right now while I'm here, return you to a portal, right? Um, and then charges remaining, it shows you how many charges it has, right? So that's the, that's the variable, right? You don't, the variable's not in this one, right, at the beginning, because we already created the variable when we gave it to them, right? When we gave them the item, we created that variable. And so we just call that value. Then I put a label here for return, which is very similar to that um, portal scroll one that I, I did uh, previously. And so then we give them a choice, right? Um, show choices, set portal, return to portal, never mind. When set portal, and then... Um, and then when return to portal, right? And then when never mind, it sets that for you when you uh, do your show, show choices, right? So there's my choices, okay? Uh, default choice one, um, default cancel is choice three. And of course, when you, if you want to make that, you just uh, go here and show choices is your first uh, cho option right there, okay? And then this is also the label, label and jump to label, right? Label, you get to name it, and then jump to label, you get to name it, okay? So uh, we do our show choices. Now, when, it's, when they choose set portal, the first thing it's gonna do is just like in the scroll choice, it's gonna check and say, is there uh, a portal already set? And the way it's doing that is it's checking for the variable that I created, portal location map ID, portal location map ID. So if conditional branch page one, if the variable portal location map ID is greater than zero, then it's it's going to do something, right? And as we talked uh, in the in the scroll one, we know that um, to transfer a player somewhere you have to use a map ID and a X and a Y location, right? A, ma a map ID and an X and Y location. And these maps over here on this side, they start with one and they go up, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? There should be, or 10. Okay. So um, if map ID is zero, that means that there is no you didn't select a, uh, a map. There, there is no map. There is no map zero. So that means you have never set a portal. If it's greater than one, you have a portal set because when you set the portal, it's going to get the map ID of the player. And it's going to be in for this, for this map. I mean, for this game right now, it's going to be map one through 10. Okay. So if the, um, the variable portal location map ID is greater than zero, then that means you have a portal. And so that there's going to be a text box, you have a portal set, do you wish to set a new portal? And then it's going to give you another set of choices, yes or no, right? When yes, it's going to jump to label set portal, which is actually jumping down. Here's set portal, right? And then when no, it's jumping to label return, which takes you back to here to allow you to set your choices again, to do your choices again. So um, when yes, jump to portal, uh, jump to label set portal. When no, jump to label return. Uh, and then it's gonna, you know, where, whatever you picked, it's gonna, it's gonna continue down. So here's the label set to portal. And then this, just like in the scroll option uh, for, for, tele, for uh, portals, you have a variable for portal location map ID right, the, which is set to the game data of map ID, which is under other, okay, other map ID. And so that, that gets the map ID, then portal location X is going to be set to the game data, which is the character player map X, okay, which very, very, very simple. And then you're going to get the Y location. So portal location Y 
is set to the game data of the character player map Y. Okay, and once you've done that, when you're setting the portal, you're just getting the map ID, the X, and the Y location of the player, saving it in three variables, which you are then going to use to um, return to that portal. Okay, and then in this instance, the the text, the flavor text, if you will, as you wish, the portal has been set, right? Then we have our control variable of our portal amulet charges. We're going to have to subtract one from that because you used it. So you set a portal, you therefore you used one of the charges, so we have to subtract, right? We have to take the control variable, our, our portal amulet charges, subtract a constant of one, okay? Uh, that's for if you want to set a portal. If you want to return to portal, then it's going to check, just like that scroll, um, is if the portal location map ID is equal to zero this time, right? That means if it's zero, you've never set a portal because you don't have a, a map ID, right, for the player. So it's it's a it's a zero. If it's zero, then for flavor text, it's going to say you have not set a portal yet, and then it's going to jump to label return, which means it takes you all the way back up here to your choices again, where you could you know set portal, return to portal, never mind. Um, and then if, if it's going to, it's you, you're using another else branch, right? So again, here we go. We have our, uh, if it's, if it's equal to zero, we checked off our else branch, um, else you're going to take that portal amulet charge. Again, you're going to de decrease it by one because you're now returning to portal. So you're using a charge to return to that, to that portal. So you're going to deduct one. And then you're going to transfer the player. And um, to transfer a player, right, you can do either direct designation. I showed this on the scroll, right? You can click direct direct designation. And then it's asking you to select um, either when you click this down, you're either going to click on the map that you're on or you could change to any of the maps, right? Well, not this one, because this is the first one, and that's not, not anything there. This is actually the first usable map. So you can click there for direct designation, and then you click a, click a spot. And this is basically going to take the map ID and then the X and Y location, right? That's, what, that's exactly what it's doing. Or you can designate with variables, and you have to pick the ID. So you use the, um, the variable, right? You have to find your variable. That uh, that is that you're using portal location map ID, and then portal location X, and then portal location Y, right? So you're just using those Re directions means your player is going to retain the way they're facing, or you can change the way they're facing, and then um, fade you can do black, white, or none. Okay, so and that's all you need to transfer somebody. You need a map ID, you need a location X and Y. And then the never mind, of course, there's nothing and it just ends the event. All right. So that's the event. That's all it is. So the, the real difference between this and the scroll one is that in the scroll one, you were using up uh, a, a, an item, right? You were actually using the item because it was consumable. And, you know, then we had to make sure that if you didn't set a portal or didn't um, return to a portal, we gave you a scroll back. Now, in this one, we're using an item with charges, and so we're tracking those charges using another variable. And so in, in, this, um, in this common event, the first thing it has to do is check to see if you have charges left. If you don't, it's going to tell you, and you're going to have to go get it charged. And then, um, and then you're, again, this is just flavor text on how you approach it, showed that you can use a variable for the charges to, to show that to the player. And then you give them a choice. What are we going to do? Set return portal, never mind. And then it's going to check. If it's you're setting a portal, it's going to check. Portal location map ID. If it's greater than zero, that means you've set a portal before, right? You're, and your, your map ID in this instance is going to be one through 10, uh, one of those. And then it's going to show flavor text, right? You've already set a portal. You sure you want to you know, uh, reset it? Yes, no. And you're jumping to the labels that move you uh, forward or backwards in this event. And then when it's set portal, right, um, you're going to 
uh, get the map ID, the X location, and the Y location of the player, saving them in three different uh, variables. And you're going to just shoot, do flavor text if, if you desire, right? You don't, you don't have to actually do flavor text. It's up to you. And then you're going to uh, reduce the uh, variable for charges by one because that's, you know, that's how we're tracking it. And then if it's returned to portal, you're going to do the conditional statement, right? Conditional branch. If the portal location map ID is zero, so we've never set one, it gives you flavor text. It returns you, jumps you to the label return so you can start over or else it's going to deduct one from the charges variable and then it's going to transfer you to the um, place where you set your portal. That's the common event. Okay, pretty, pretty simple. Okay, so um, let's apply that and save it because I did change one thing. So again, I showed you the, I showed you the item that we used, which calls the common event and we're not consuming it. Right. Um, and then, uh, of course, I showed you the common event of how it's set up. I showed you the chest where we were initially setting the amount of charges for that item. We were giving them the item. And of course, then we had flavor text telling them we were giving the item. And then I showed you this recharging option. Right. And you could do this any any number of ways that you wanted to. Um, you could even make it where they could cast a spell, perhaps, to recharge um, the their items. Right. You could you could actually give a character uh, a, a class of characters or something uh, or maybe a skill like you could have a um, uh, you could have a job, a, a classification, whatever you want to call them, a, uh, a class of characters that um, can can make. Uh, items, right? Uh, an engineer or something, and they can recharge items. And so you could make this as a skill versus as a castable spell or as, you know, like an, an altar or something, or, you know, you could pray to the gods or something to charge your items. You can do this any way you want, but the, the, the uh, methodology is, is, you know, very simple. Um, you, if you don't want them to charge it, you know, without being you know, completely depleted, then you have to check for that first. And then um, you have to reset the variable, right, for how much uh, they have. And then, you know, again, flavor text to tell them what's going on. Uh, of course, you can do this any way you want. You, you, you could set a maximum uh, to the number of charges they can have. Um, it can be random. It can be fixed. It can be whatever you want, however you want to set it up. But this is just one way to do it, okay? And that I think is pretty much it. Um, yeah, the the so this is just uh, you know again I I picked an amulet, but it could be any item that you choose to give. Now again, the limitations of this one is that you noticed it's still just having one portal in the game. There's there's only one portal in this instance. Now in theory, you could have two portals if you used both the scrolls and the portal amulet because with the scrolls you're set you're setting it to different variables right uh portal scroll map id portal scroll x uh, uh i'm sorry scroll portal x scroll portal y so when you use a scroll it's going to use one set of variables for setting and returning to portal and we use an amulet it's using a different set now you could actually use the same set of variables and therefore, your amulet would override your scroll, or your scroll would override your amulet, or you could use, you know, uh, a, a scroll to return to something that you set with the amulet. You could do it that way, or the way I built this here, independent of each other, just to test functionality, you'd use different variables, which means, in theory, if you had both of these in your game, you would have two portals. Right, you just have to whichever one you use. Whether if you're using scrolls, you go to one. If you use an amulet, you go to a different one. Okay, and that's and again, that's pretty much it. So um, I hope I hope this is helpful. Uh, I I still have probably three more um, videos to do for more uh, complicated ways of doing portals, um, giving you some different options, especially with having multiple portals. Right, letting each player. Uh, in your party, each character in your party, each party member have a portal. 
um, or just just allowing you to have a, a an item that has you know four or five uh, portals at a time and let you rename them to whatever you want and let them name them of your choice. Um, that's probably the one I'm going to show next is is how to let uh, you rename the portals uh, of your of your choice to to keep track of. Uh, so again, I hope this is helpful. Um, if these videos are helpful, you know, please consider liking, subscribing, getting notifications, leaving comments. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know if if you you know think this might be useful for you in in whatever you're trying to make. Um, if you have suggestions, if you have ideas, if you have thoughts, uh, if you have other ways to do something, you know, don't don't hesitate to share, um, share resources, uh, what have you. Um, and um, you know, if you have requests for things, you can leave them in comments too, and and I'll try. If, if you know, worst case scenario is is I you ask for something and I can't figure it out. <laughs> That's the worst case. So um, so anyway, uh, again, uh, wrapping up this video, uh, I, I will just say. Uh, think very open-mindedly about your game developing, right? Uh, the more you can imagine, the more you can achieve in, in game development, uh, especially with this. This is, I, I just have, am having a great time doing, doing this, trying to figure things out. Uh, to me, it's very rewarding when you can figure, figure out something. Um, so again, uh, I hope everybody has a great day. I'll try to get some more videos up. In the meantime, happy gaming, happy game development, and uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful day, and I will talk to everyone later. Bye.